G'day friends and welcome to our bushfire safety system install series. This was a massive project that took about five full days to complete and we ended up learning way too much to condense into one video. So this episode is part one where we will go over the plans, dig some trenches with an excavator and by hand and after that we'll lay and bury the polypipe. So let's put on our work boots and get stuck into it. And as with any project, it's always good to have at least somewhat of a plan when starting out. So I put together this rough sketch to take to a local irrigation supply store so that they could help make it all happen. The design included six pop-up sprinklers to ensure that the area surrounding the mound could be kept wet to prevent the grass from drying out and becoming a fire hazard. There were also two hydrant points added to put out spot fires or for filling up water tanks. And of course, for anyone new to irrigation plumbing, one of these stores can be pretty overwhelming. So don't be ashamed to ask for help. Every irrigation store that I visited has been really helpful and it's really important also to check that your design is safe because if you make mistakes you can have burst pipes like this one and so after a crash course on irrigation plumbing from the experts at all about pumps and pipes in queensland it was decided that we needed a two inch poly pipeline from the dam to the mound which then separated off into two one and a half inch lines one was a loop around the mound for the sprinklers and the other line was for the hydrants. I also found out that the sprinklers can spray at a radius of 14 meters, which meant that there would be some nice overlaps. Assembling all of the components in store is a good way to make sure that you don't forget how to put it all together when you get back home. So here is our two inch line going from the pump to the mound. And then this first two inch T intersection splits off to the one and a half inch hydrants line and then continues to the second two inch T intersection that connects the loop of pop-up sprinklers. All of the components can be isolated with the 1.5 inch ball valve for the hydrants and two inch ball valve for the sprinklers. And this part is the foot valve. It lets water in but doesn't let it out to allow for easier priming every time you start the pump. The next part of this job was digging the trenches. For this, we hired a 1.8 ton excavator for about 300 bucks for the entire weekend. These machines are good fun to drive and they use hardly any fuel. And if you don't have anyone to teach you how to use one, there's heaps of uh, YouTube tutorials out there to get you up to speed. And uh, though the downside is that these little diggers aren't known for having their track slip off if you're not being really careful. And we actually had that happen during this job after going on some sloppy ground. And after spending over an hour getting covered in grease and stomping around in mud, it helped me to realize that the old pick and shovel aren't all that bad after all. But the biggest piece of wisdom I can share about digging trenches with a machine like this is don't dig in a perpendicular direction to the trench. Dig in the same direction as the trench, like you can see here. The trenches are narrow enough for you to drive over them, but if you dig perpendicular to them from the side, they'll be at least twice as wide as they need to be and it'll just be really messy. And so here is an example that you can see there from a distance. I uh, just drove over that trench and as you can see, it's nice and safe. And digging in this way leaves the trenches nice and narrow. If you're doing long distances, make sure to mark out your trenches, guys. You'll thank yourself later for doing so. And for this part, we realized that that little excavator just wasn't going to reach where we needed the trenches. 
because the batters of the mound are really steep. So there's no way it could have been driven on an incline that steep. And digging trenches sideways is too messy anyway. So it was time to grab our shovels and get ready for what ended up being about eight hours of non-stop digging. At times like these, teamwork makes the dream work. And funny enough, something I realized only towards the end of this project is that we should have been digging the trenches in the opposite direction to what you see here, because doing it this way, the bottom of the trench remains uneven after pieces fall out of the shovel. But if you dig in the direction you're facing, you'll scoop up all the bits that drop out as you go and use less energy while being more productive. So here is an example of doing it the right way at the end of the project where you only need to do one pass over each trench and you don't need to tidy it after you're finished. Completing these trenches in just over one day was a challenge we probably wouldn't ever attempt again, but finally it was all now ready and complete and it was time to lay the poly pipe. This is 150 meters of poly pipe. We're about to lay it in the trenches we just dug for our firefighting system. Quick disclaimer, we have never worked with poly pipe before. So in this part, we learned how not to unroll poly pipe because with lengths like these, uh, there was so many twists to undo that in the end, it was impossible to not put a kink in the pipe. And when you do kink poly pipe, it's, it's really hard to undo. So if it's a minor bend, you can use a heat gun to try and smooth it out but it doesn't always go well. So it's always best to just not kink it in the first place. After about half an hour, we had all of the twists undone. Special technique of unraveling the poly pipe. And now we're trying to place about a hundred meters of a poly pipe all at the same time, so. He goes into the distance. Yay, first section laid. <laughs> There's two things that are really helpful when laying poly pipe. The first is if you have somebody to help out and hold one end in place. And the second thing is if it's a nice warm day, like it was that day, the sun really helps to smooth out the curves in the poly pipe so that it lays down nice and flat. We're in our last stretch of poly pipe. Will it be long enough or will it not be long enough? <laughs> I kinked the end of it. We kinked it earlier so we had to chop off a section so fingers crossed it makes it. Is it just too short? It's three meters short. It's three meters short, oh my goodness. We've got joiners, it's okay. We could have kinked it more, it's fine. We'll make it work. Time to unroll. Let's unroll it the right way this time. That's what the problem was last time. Every time we pulled, it twisted it, and then we had to undo all the twists. This time around, we just roll it. We love poly pipe. <laughs> it's our favorite thing.
Time to bury the polypipe. Got Alex on the rake. Me for quality control. It's such a hard job, but for the next 40 or so years that we're alive, every time there's a bushfire risk, we're going to have these sprinklers pop up and keep the place nice and wet. So very worth it. And as you may already be thinking, of course all of the fittings do still need to be installed. So here we were burying small sections of the polypipe just to avoid it from either popping out from expanding in the heat or if it rained then silt wouldn't wash under the pipes and we wouldn't need to redo the trenches again. It's something you wouldn't normally think to be a problem but recently we had a nightmare of a situation where trenches kept getting flooded for some footings that I was working on and we just had to keep redoing them for the rain to ruin it all over again. And so basically wherever we could use the excavator we did and inaccessible sections were done with a rake. This driveway part here was especially important to get right because in a couple of days time we'd have trucks driving over it to deliver gravel. And obviously any spots that needed fittings or sprinklers to be installed were left without bearing to reconvene at a later time. One thing to note here too is that normally people don't worry too much about adding gravel or sand when burying polypipe, but it is important to avoid putting in massive rocks or hard chunks of clay because they can put a dent in the polypipe and slow down the flow of water. And if you are wondering how deep to bury your poly, 400 millimeters is more than enough where you'll have machinery driving over it but otherwise 100 millimeters is okay in most instances if there won't be cars or trucks going over it. After this part of the project was complete, it was time to lay down the gravel across the driveways. And we had a few big trucks drive over our poly pipe while crossing our fingers that it would survive. Join us in the next episode to have a go at assembling all of the fittings, including the main junction and isolation points, the hydrant points, and most importantly, the sprinklers themselves. And as always, thanks for stopping by our channel and don't forget to like, comment or subscribe if you find our videos helpful.